Can I ask Martin, Eric, and uh, William or Lily up to the stage while they're walking up to introduce them quickly? I've been told that I should cut out about five to ten minutes of our section, but that's okay, no panic. Uh, in the breakout section, we have an hour to dig deeper into uh, the questions. And it was built that way because this is just really to whip your appetite before lunch and really to uh, raise some questions for you to follow up in the breakout section. Okay. So, we're lucky to have Martin Pasquale, who's a trustee and he's the chairman of uh, Pasquale Farming Corporation. Very nice to be with you this morning. He's also a co founder, managing partner, great maker. Uh, partners, and last we have been the president of financial services of ICCP venture partners. Two things I have in common, they're all investors, so it's the right topic, and unfortunately they chose me as the one who I'm a banker, I'm not uh, investing in uh, entrepreneurial projects, but a little bit about money. And the second thing is they invest in the Philippines, regionally and also in the our focus is how we can get investments in, into your ventures, but not just uh, in, in the Philippines, but also in the US. So, can we just start off with questions? I'll start off with you. Put your shoes, uh, put yourself in the shoes of the startup. And how would you go about and where would you go to get that? Okay, so if I were a startup entrepreneur, where would I go to get funding? Context being here in the Philippines. So I think from some of the other panels, I think Miko said it, your number one resource will be Google, at least as a quick uh, solution. In Google, you can basically put in funding Philippines, something like that. There are already funding opportunities here in the Philippines, right? So there are people, all of you students or startups that are out here now, you have sort of, if you want to do some concrete things to try and find funding or at least information about funding, the two day, this symposium today and the workshop for the next two days is your opportunity because there are funders here now in the Philippines. So whether it's Kickstart, Idea Space, this panel, right? You should all be coming out of here with at least five to six email addresses for business cards, right? That's how concrete, as an entrepreneur, you need to get. Right. Thank you. Eric, you can answer that question or follow up question. From the investor point of view, what are the minimum requirements that you look at from an entrepreneur looking for So I'll just follow a little bit of what Martin said. Um, before you do that, and I agree completely that you should do that, what I did was when I did my first startup back in the Stone Ages, what I first did was I actually rated my savings account. So before you ask money from strangers or third party guys that have invested money, go put some real skin in the game aside from time and go rate your own savings account. If that's not enough, go ask people that you know believe in you to at least pitch them. And it's somewhat controversial because you, don't want, you never want to mix investments, loans with friends and family because that's the fastest way to lose them. But I would probably challenge you to come up with two or three guys that really, that you know believe in you and go there. Um, in terms of the very minimum requirements for stuff that we end up doing, so we do a lot of early, early, early stage companies. A lot of them are pre revenue companies. Um, when I crossed over to the venture side back in 2003 to today, we have, we have touched approximately about 150 companies. We're very quantitative. Average investment bite sizes are about 250 to 350, so really angel bite sizes. The very, the, the very minimum, what I would say is I would, 
if, if I were to the rewind time and I was the entrepreneur asking me for money, I would at least, at the very least, show that I have proven my thesis just a little bit. I don't care if it's not translating into revenues, but if, you, if, if your thesis is to generate X or do Y, tell me how, you're, how you've proven your thesis a little bit, and then that would jumpstart my imagination to start engaging with you. And again, revenue is not necessarily a requirement, but there has to be a little bit of proof point that your thesis is somewhat working, or at least some semblance of life that you're able to pursue that it could eventually work. Billy, you're in the upper end of the scale in terms of the funding, and you can answer any of the questions, but here's the third question. How does an early stage entrepreneur transition upwards from the more, more funding, or larger company, with sure companies, interesting? Well, I, I think, maybe I'll, I'll start. It's important to understand that what we have here on the stage are investors looking at different stages or segments of the entrepreneurial market. Um, Martin is, is a true angel. Um, will help companies and, and get them graduated to the point where they'll look and Eric can consider them with those initial execution points. Um, our firm in the, the Philippines would be considered a little bit later stage, but in the U.S. we are what they call Series B. So it's a great group of execution. Whereas Eric's bite size is maybe two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand dollars for investment. Ours starts at a million, maybe up to, to five. So uh, what's important is that uh, as an entrepreneur with a company that's growing, you also target your investors given the stage. Uh, because each investor has a profile. Um, unfortunately, that profile is based on risk and quantitative analysis and the like, as you get more serious money. I think in this context, and I, I, would, I would echo what the mentoring panel had discussed just a while ago, uh, the, the process of, of working with mentors, selecting mentors, is, is a valuable and important but a long process, in the same way the fundraising process is. Um, what you, what you really need to do is reach out to a lot of the experienced professionals here, collect call and cards, network, don't be shy. Fundraising is a long process. Um, we've, had, we've funded several companies here. Um, we gracefully declined three times before we finally invested in them. Uh, they went from a business plan to finally their first customer and then to some execution stage. For us, execution, defined as a million dollars of revenue, whereas Eric will consider pre-revenue businesses. Um, for us, those are execution points where we can actually start to evaluate the slope uh, of, of the growth and, and determine how, as a firm, we can make the money. One last question, I'm being given minus five minutes time. There's a saying that there's a bit uh, from the other current uh, and and from the investors, there aren't enough good ideas. So if you did this comment, put it in and close up and then go further. The question is, what's the comment? Comment on the back, or are there enough uh, investors in the market, or are there good ideas? Because if the investor would say there aren't enough ideas, maybe it's a good entrepreneurs that aren't enough investors. It really depends on the entrepreneur, right? You can always say there's not enough, there's not enough this. And, and like uh, Elmer said, right, in the end, you'll get a lot of information from a lot of different people. But you really have to believe in your idea. If there's one thing I want to leave you with, and this is coming from an investor perspective, and I have agreed to fund someone within 20 minutes of meeting them, right? The one thing I can leave you with is be makulit, right? I know there's sort of, it's, people are a little shy, I'm shy, right? But be makulit. You have to just keep, keep, keep on pestering people. Even if it's just for information, right? You have to do your homework and not just immediately ask for something. 
At a minimum, someone will be willing just to give you information or to connect you. But you have to do your homework and you have to keep at it. You have to be comfortable with people saying no to you. But if you can get one out of 100 people to say yes, that's progress. There's a common perception that there's a liquidity squeeze or a lack of liquidity in this region. Actually, I don't believe that. There will always be capital for companies that are worth getting funded. And there are many different definitions of what's worth getting funded from metrics to, to really business traction. So um, the reason I love what I do is because it's a self-replenishing system. I have never I have never been so satisfied with all the stuff that we've seen, whether we don't fund well, we fund a lot of companies, we see a lot more than that. So we say no a lot of times, but it's so it's so refreshing that all these ideas are coming up, whether it's an old idea or a bad idea or new idea. But my point is there's always ideas out there. Um, the definition of good ideas is really mostly a function of the entrepreneur's ability to execute on the idea. And don't be discouraged in the whole perception that there's enough, there's not enough follow-on financing here, there's not enough capital in the region. Again, based on my experience, there is always capital for ideas that are worth funding and businesses that are worth pursuing. Maybe just, just one comment. I, I, I do believe there, there is a gap to go from uh, angel investing to, to more institutional funding. Uh, I, I think, uh, Look what Phil Dev is doing and the other incubator groups of like sorry, idea space. Uh, you can see the ecosystem maturing in terms of uh, the demand side of capital, uh, companies with raised capital. I think admittedly uh, on the supply side of capital, we need to work harder to to work with our companies and, and look at the ones that are percolating, that are looking for more capital and, and more development resources as, as they grow. So I think on the supply side of capital, uh, there are things we can do to how we build our side of the ecosystem as well. Okay. Three things. One is, as Martin said, you should walk out of this with at least five email addresses. Don't be shy. Go ask. Them. Second, when we have lunch or during the meeting this afternoon, pull out the speakers or the trustee, talk to them, ask them. Some of you are not going to go to the workshop. Those who are in the workshop, we have two more days to do that. For those who are not, this is the opportunity today. And not just the speakers, but anybody of the trustees. And then um, the third is, as I mentioned, this is just to read the weather app. Tonight we have another uh, 45 minutes to an hour and a half for you to ask questions. It's easy to touch the button. So, thank you very much. Where are you?